do we put the law above mankind? You know what I mean by that is this. The Sabbath, those, this was made for the benefit of man, which means that man was more important to God than the law of the Sabbath day. Are you with us? Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What you're feeling, what you're sensing is the spirit of God, the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it makes you want to worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him a big hand clap of praise. He's worthy. To be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forever. We want to tell you something. When you leave this assembly, when you go out into the marketplace, and when you go home, continue to give him praise. He is not only worthy in the sanctuary. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he is worthy. Hallelujah. From the time the sun comes up in the morning to the time it goes down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let everything that breathes praise the Lord. That means there's no restrictions on praising the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's adopt that. Uh, praise worthy attitude to the Lord God and everything's going to be all right hallelujah and you know what that will do that will change attitudes that we have that needs to be changed yes it will whoso offers praise glorifies me says the Lord and to him that orders his conduct aright, will I show the salvation of God. Isn't that, that what he said? Psalm 50, God is good, saying so. Adopt this praise. Adopt that praiseworthy attitude toward God. Hallelujah. And then the rest is history. God bless you. Good to be here. Good to see you today. Hallelujah. We are here to... Render service to God, our Savior. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Mark, chapter 2. I want you to prepare your hearts this year to become, if you are not already, to become a soul winner. If you are not a soul winner, prepare, let's prepare our hearts this year to become a soul winner. God wants us to become soul winners, right? Very important. So meditate on it, think it. And uh, God, it's, it's time that this church reached the loss. You're getting quiet on me out there. I said you're getting quiet on me out there. It's time for this church to become soul winners. Hallelujah, right? This is acceptable in the sight of our God. 
you'll only know the joy of what it means to be in service for God when you do. I, I, I got to get back to it. I, I have to, and I believe you do too. So while we're uh, turning our attention to Mark chapter 2, going to read starting at verse 23. The Bible says, And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have you never read what David did when he had need and was and hungered, he and they that were with him? How we went into the house of God on the days of Abiathar the high priest, and did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat but for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him? And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the, the Son of man, man is, is Lord, Lord also, also of, of the, the Sabbath. Sabbath. Praise God. Shall we pray? I would like for you, if you will, to join hands with someone as we pray. We want to come in agreement for God to continue to charge the atmosphere that he would minister his light and his love to us and to those otherwise. Father, we thank you right now. And we honor you. We give you praise. We bless you because you're a marvelous, magnificent, wonderful God. You are exceedingly glorious in power. None is so kind. None is so gracious. None is so plenty in mercy as you, our God. Lord, we come in agreement now with the purpose and plan of the Almighty God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that you've given us power and authority to bind and to loosen. So with the authority given unto us, we bind every hindrance master that would interfere with the word of life that will come forth at this time and we refute the lies of the enemy we forbid and we cancel every lying spirit and we we command it in the name of Jesus to be loosed from this place and go in the name of Jesus Christ Lord I ask that you will purify this atmosphere again by your spirit oh God in the name of Jesus and every attempt of the enemy Lord God to throw a line I ask Lord God that you would lift up a stand against him now in the mighty name of Jesus I ask, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will have free course in this place today. And let your purpose be at stake. Your purpose, Lord, be made clear again to us, Lord God, as we've come, Lord, for an ambassador's meeting. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a praise before you're seated. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord for his goodness. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. We'll talk a little about Jesus and his disciples on the Sabbath day. We read this passage of scripture here, and uh, as I was reading it, something caught my attention concerning this passage of scripture, and uh, so I started to just sort of look a bit closer into it, and um, <clears throat> So in the Bible says, and it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. The Pharisees said to him, behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? He said to them, have you never read what David did when he had need and was in hunger? He and they that were with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abiah the high, the high priest. And did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. So his response was amazing. Now, it, uh, and studies say that the disciples actually were not breaking the Sabbath because the text makes it clear that they were journeying. It was as they were journeying through the cornfield. And in the law of Moses, it uh, uh, gave certain stipulations uh, that what was considered 
work and what was not considered work. And so what they, what, what they were doing, it was as they were journeying, and the corn is not like the corn that we know today, but it was like more of a wheat grain. And so as they were journeying, the disciples were, they would take some of the sheaves and, 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 and rub it in their hands and eat, to eat. And uh, so the scribes and the Pharisees, they had developed so many little um, I should say, additions to the law. They had just a string of uh, additions that over the years that they had uh, accomplished or accumulated because of trying to keep the law and trying to have a purity about it. But in the process of doing so, they actually moved away from the initial purpose of the law and obviously the spirit of the law they moved away from it altogether so um, but when Jesus came then he was always interpreting either the intent of the law or straightening out their traditions that they had so long been doing and so you probably can if you can just imagine how it was difficult for them the leaders to really get with Jesus because they had ventured so far from the intent of the law of Moses and what it was intended to do until they thought they were doing it right and, and they were sincere in what they were doing. It's just that they were so far out and left field. And so when Jesus came, who, uh, was the, who uh, made the laws uh, and the purity of it, it just seemed like they were, and they were in opposition because it threatened everything that they had known and knew for so long. But uh, I read something in uh, Numbers that, that made me at least have a greater sense of respect for them, what they were trying to do. And uh, it was in uh, the book of uh, Numbers 15. So I, if you can, I want you to turn there briefly with me. <clears throat> Numbers 15. And when you're there, say amen. All right, now in Numbers 15, I'm going to uh, read starting at verse uh, 32. The Bible says, <clears throat> okay, I hear pages. I'll wait a second. A couple more seconds. Verse 32 says, And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. And they put him in ward because it was not declared what should be done to him. It was like putting him in the cell or jail or something like that until he'd be tried. Or they got the word from God because even though God had given them the law, the law of Moses, there were some things there. It was not clearly understood what to be done. And this was a case where they really weren't sure as to what should have been done. So they put him in ward until they had a chance to seek the Lord. Verse 35 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall be surely put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without or outside the camp. And all the congregation brought him outside or without the camp and stoned him with stones. And he died as the Lord commanded Moses. So as I read that, I thought, wow. You know, you can see how when they are striving to keep the law because that one of the things about the law that it gendered bondage and fear. It kept them in a state of fear and bondage because the punishment was death, right? And so they, they were afraid of death. This was, you know, in uh, the Bible talks about it in Hebrews that they were uh, in bondage, held in bondage through fear of death. And so this was, a, but it made it clear when I read that again of how uh, here was a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. Don't doesn't really go into detail what, why he was gathering sticks and the, the nature of uh, how large they were, nothing like that. But the fact 
that he was gathering sticks on the Sabbath day cost him his life. So you can see how the scribes and Pharisees over the years begin to develop this uh, certain laws to try and interpret what was considered work and what was not considered work. And uh, so that's where they were when Jesus came uh, on the scene. And so when Jesus came on the scene, they had ventured, as I said, so far out. And, uh, of course, uh, another scripture here briefly uh, is found in Exodus chapter 20. I want you to turn there right there, and then, um, then we'll go back to the text. Exodus 20, <clears throat> verse 8, as God was giving Moses the Ten Commandments. Verse 8 says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, you, thou, nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For, or because, in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So here we see the purpose of the Sabbath. The Bible says in Genesis, in the creation, the Bible says after, and after six days, the Bible says he, the Lord rested on the seventh day. Everybody remember that? He rested from all of his labor, his creation, and he hallowed that seventh day. And that's where he uh, instituted and made them to understand that he made this day holy. And so for mankind, the Sabbath, the first thing Jesus in his response was, the Sabbath was made for man. And there's a lot in that. So as I read that, it made me think. And while I understood the fears that they would have trying not to violate the standard of uh, polluting the Sabbath day, uh, they developed a fear that they may be polluting it, the slightest thing. So they, they were so technical in, in, in what had uh, been accomplished over the years uh, that, I mean, it was a very oppressive kind of life for them to try to live for God. And what the scribes and Pharisees put on the, the people, uh, it, it was something else because basically they couldn't really measure up to all those little things that they had to do uh, to, to uh, what they felt pleased the Lord. And Jesus, and that's one of the reasons why Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All right. We'll get back to that later. But uh, so Jesus' response to them was the Sabbath. First he said, have you not read or heard what happened to David? When he and his men were hungry. And as I look back again and refresh my mind and memory on what had happened, David went to Abimelech, who was the uh, high priest at the time, and his son, Abiathar, was to become high priest later. But the Bible points to Abiathar. And um, so David was fleeing for his life from Saul and he had left and his, he and his men when they got word that where he was that Saul and his men were on their way they were headed there and here he just they it was said the studies said that he obviously didn't have time didn't take time to try to bring any food but they just fled for their lives 
So if you can imagine a man running from the king and his men, that must have been a horrible scene. Because where can you go from the king? I mean, he's got the power to kill you and destroy you, and that's what he was going to do had the Lord not stopped him and his soldiers. So David was in a very uh, fearful state. So he ran for his life. He came to Nob, and there uh, he went to the temple trying to find safety and so on. And we got there. Uh, there was a, a, a Bimelech, a Biathar, and David was, and his men were hungry. And he was looking for some food. He asked uh, um, the high priest, was there any food? And he said, well, there's nothing here but some showbread. And uh, they were, basically the showbread was uh, like 12 loaves of bread there, representing the children of Israel and the communion with, and the fellowship with God. And so they, uh, he told them that's, you know, you know, if, you, if the men have, you know, kept themselves from women, they can go ahead and partake. So David said, well, we've surely done that. So, <laughs> and so he gave them the showbread. Now, it was only lawful for the priest to eat, right? So, but, but God went back and he could have said to them, okay, y'all are condemning me, but did you not read the scripture what David did and he was blameless? He broke the law. But he's blameless, right? And, but, so as he was sharing that with them, and then he, uh, and if you read the other Matthews and uh, Luke, I think they have verses of what took place. They didn't say, Mark is the only uh, one that says uh, the Sabbath was made for man. But the others say, uh, Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And so, Study says that there obviously was a conversation between chapters and um, verses 26 and verse 27 because there's a little uh, one of these little uh, signs there in verse 27 in some Bibles that makes them know that somewhere there was a piecing of the material that was found. So it is said that, um, that they, Jesus had shared a whole lot more to them, but what they did pick up was he said, therefore. Uh, he said, the Son of Man, uh, verse 28, I'm sorry, therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So first he said the Sabbath was made for man, man not man for the Sabbath. Uh, how many times, think, think with me, how many times do we put the law above mankind? You may, and what I mean by that is this. The Sabbath, those, this was made for the benefit of man. Which mean that man was more important to God than the law of the Sabbath day. Are you with me? And uh, if he had said the man was made for the Sabbath, then that means the Sabbath was more important than man. But the fact that he said man was made for the Sabbath. No, I'm sorry. The Sabbath was made for man, right? Not man. For the Sabbath. Now that changes the whole thing. I mean that, 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 that really helps us. And so it was like God showed me that. And so. Um, and although the disciples. Just study says. They really didn't break the law. But it's the disciples interpretation. That was that he was breaking the law. And that Jesus was allowing his followers to break the law. But he wasn't. But Jesus' response was to a lot of those erroneous additions to the word of God, misinterpreting the purpose and the meaning behind the law. Y'all with me? All right, so this is him, him to respond to them. So he said, the Sabbath was made for man. In other words, it was for man's benefit. God saw, he said, six days you can work. work. Man need to work, right? But then man also need to rest, right? Now, some people work seven days a week. I wouldn't advise that. The body needs rest. They say that the uh, nurses and doctors and some of the uh, uh, sciences, they tell, they have studied and seen the benefits of rest. Let me tell you what happened to me one day. I, was, I, I had this condition in my body. It looked like it was not getting well. I was taking everything, fighting it, and doing everything. 
It looked like it was getting worse. Then the Lord said to me, he said, I want you to take two weeks off. Just go, go take two weeks vacation. So we did. We went up northern part of Virginia and Maryland. Took two weeks. After a sufficient time of rest, my body healed. You, you get what I'm saying? The body needs rest. Discovery is that if the body doesn't get proper rest, it starts to affect your immune system, your nervous system, right? And it will eventually start affecting a lot of other areas. So the Lord, in his love for man, looking out for man, says the Sabbath was made for man. Now, I know it had some other implications, too, but first and foremost, this is what he wanted, right? So God wanted us to rest. How many work in seven days a week? Anybody? Well, you don't have to. You shouldn't, right? You're working seven days a week. You need to stop one of those days and get your body rest. Because in the future, it could tell on you, right? Now, God's not going to tell us now, don't work seven days. But he got it in his word, right? So he said the body needs rest. Rest. All right. So when, uh, as he shared that, I began to talk to him and ask him about the Sabbath and so on and why they were, you know, what, what, they, well, what they had done, or the principle, I should say, that what was brought out is this here. Human need is more important than ceremonial rituals. Are you with me? Human need is more important than ceremonial riches, rituals. So sometimes if we are so bent, can be so bent on trying to do right or wanting somebody else to do right, we can miss the human need of that person. All right? You see how people sometimes they reject the person if they are not what they call righteous. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they may have an adamant or, uh, attitude or a judgment against them. I've done that. You know, thank God that uh, I'm not there now. But I'm saying is this, is that that can happen, and but that is pharisaical, right? The Pharisees were righteous in themselves, and so they had a tendency to judge anybody else that didn't measure up, right? 